Alright guys, Living Dead 69 here and welcome to my AOI F1 Bahrain GP race. Um, just going through the setup, two one wings, 49.51 high standard, uh, suspension 11.1, 11.11. Uh, don't worry about the fuel because this was basically like my third time going around the track pretty much. I had no idea how the car was going to handle online because I'd just been spent about Fit all in all, probably about half hour, 45 minutes on time trial. Just trying to get used to the track. But yeah, just about to go out on track now. Not really expecting much from this qualifying session, to be honest. Probably going to be stone dead last and have a terrible run out of the last corner, which puts me to anywhere between the tenth or two temps down. JD disconnects, which was horrible because I think he was he weren't that far off pole. I think it was um, just under a tenth or so. Can't remember off the top of my head. But going into the first corner break a little bit too early, but I just wanted to make sure I got the entrance like perfect to give me a great run out of this. Out of turns two and three. Heading up to the start of sector two. You got to try and nail this corner as best you can. Try and slide it through the apex while not touching the curb by getting as close as possible to it. Get a little bit scraggly on the exit there. Got to try and keep it tidy through it. That you can gain so much time, but you can also lose so much time going through that little S section. Same with this corner. Late apex, I turned in too early and took off too much speed, so I had to sort of adapt my line going through it. One of my most hated corners on this game, but yeah, flick it down into first to get car swung around. Get on the power nice and early. If you get on it too early, though, you'll force the back end step out and you'll lose a few attempts just trying to gain traction. So, yeah, coming up to this left hander now, down into third gear, get the car swung in, missed the apex by about two feet, so I probably lost about another tenth or so there. Coming up to the penultimate corner, I, this corner usually catches me out. It takes me a few turns of turning, and it takes me a while to get like breaking points and turning points now. But it seems like it's been a pretty solid lap so far. Coming up to the last corner, got to make sure I do it a lot better than I did on the start of my lap. Perfectly, in my my point of view. I pro probably could have been a little bit quicker coming out of it, but I've, considering how I went into that corner, definitely not bad. But 31.6 and that is really not that bad. I think after all the shenanigans in qualifying, that put me third after JD and Brosiet disconnected. So, with not a lot of practice, managing to get up there on third in the AORF1 division, which is just madness, to be honest. But I think if we had all the drivers from last season, you had like Noble and all that, I probably would have been saying like seventh. But yeah, just got to make the most of it now. Knew Rosberg was going to get a terrible start because he's on a wheel. So, following Leo Bot into the first corner, I was hoping I was going to get in front of Rosberg, do we? Yeah, got in front of Rosberg for the first corner. Down into first gear, just hang it around the outside. Managed to hold second place, which is ridiculous, considering I'm nowhere near the fastest guy in this league, but I'm holding it with Leo Bot. Guy coming up to turn, I think it's four. Throwing it down the inside, down into first, so we don't run into Leo Bot. Try and hang him out to dry around the outside. Side by side going into this little section, but got the inside line. Drop it down into third to get the turn in. And somehow, I am leading an AOR F1 race. I don't... You'll see, <laughs> you'll see it don't last long. But no practice, missed the first two races of the season. And admit, I don't, I, no idea why Rosberg retired. Probably got caught by someone. Might have been a rage quit, not too sure. But um, yeah. It's astonishing that with no practice and mission, uh, mission? missing the first two races of the season, I can be leading at Bahrain. Like, just, oh. I mean, I've, I think throughout the day I've done nothing but played Destiny, watched the last race in Abu Dhabi, and congrats Hamilton, two-time world champion, Avit. But I didn't really have any practice for this race. I just, after watching the F1, I was like, all right, I'll just be smooth and quick like no mistakes right just keep it clean and somehow it worked it i don't know how i like even when i was practicing this game i was so far off the pace it was a joke and you'll see now i don't know where my breaking points are so yeah almost get mugged by leo bot and franklish but managing to hold on to second place leo bot slightly cutting the corner there but it's, that corner is so easy to cut you don't really gain much from it and at times it can throw you off anyway so yeah, just gonna follow Leo Bot, like, well, try to. Ran wide at turn four, I think it is. 
and that gave Franglis the opportunity to go around the inside. I tried to hold it around the outside, but it was never going to happen. So settled down into third place, pretty much. So yeah, I mean, it was going to lose the lead, but as I said, no practice. Like this is the best of like any scenario that I could have possibly came up with. So yeah, forward to the end of lap two, completely balls up the last corner again. It's not one of my favourites. With TRL Minty behind me, quality racer. Like started in F4 with him, and he's done nothing but fly up the ranks and started challenging the top guys in the F1 division. But yeah, he tries to send it down the inside. I hang it around the outside of him. I'm not going to give up this third place easily. Because even though I know I really shouldn't actually be this high up, like I think given my pace throughout the end of last season, my pace on this game in general, since I got it, I should probably be like just within the points or just outside. But yeah, so to be third, I'm going to fight it. And seeing as Leo Bottom Franklish aren't exactly pulling away, I must be doing something, right? But yeah, on to lap four now. Minty's got a lot closer. I know it looks like I moved twice there, but usually when I go to cover the inside and I see someone going even deeper to the inside, I'll pull out of it because I don't want to get the side pod glitch. So I know some people say, oh, double move or whatever, but I was just trying, like usually if I keep going that way, I'll run into someone and then it could cause an accident. So I just thought, no, nah, if he's go if he's going to carry on going to the inside, I'll just stick to the middle of the road. But it looked like he was going to attempt the switch, uh, the sort of like switch back, whatever the fuck it's called, can't remember. Brain's gone dead. But um, yeah, so unintentional there. Wasn't trying to impede uh, impede you, Minty. But that's what it looked like happened. But yeah, hanging on to the back of Franklish. Lyrabot's not exactly pulling away from Franklish either. We've got Minty trying to go around the outside. Again, not working. He tries to go up the inside of this corner. Gives me a little nudge. And um, he manages to get through. Can't really complain about that. But now I'm in a TRL sandwich. I've got Minty ahead and Limitless behind. So, fake going down the inside. I just want to make sure I get a decent exit off this corner, which I don't because I ran the bollard. So, yeah, that last corner is... I, just, I couldn't find a line through there that I could nail every time. Like, not even 100% nail it, like, even just saying, like, 90%, so I wouldn't lose that much time. But, yeah, Limitless goes through. Somehow lose the back end on the curb as I go into the corner. But, um, yeah, cut that corner as well. No, man, this, and now we've got Montoya behind me. So I've gone from leading the race on lap one, and on average, I've lost a position a lap. So um, that sounds a bit more like it, to be honest. I knew I was way out of position. I was like punching way above my weight there. But yeah, managed to hold fifth for quite a while to the end of lap seven. I noticed everybody was going to carry on, so I thought I'll try a different strategy. I had a feeling that people were going to go for either. I knew it was going to be a two stop. There's no way you were going to do a one stop round it. But I knew I had a, I had a feeling people were most likely going to go option, option, prime just to try and get the two quick stints done and then just do a solid lasting. I, I thought. Well, Maybe my only chance at this is to go the opposite way. So put on the prime tyres, get those out of the way, go for as long as I can in the race on them, and then blitz the last nine or so laps on the options. But yeah, um, I can let you know now, the out lap was all right. It weren't the best. Like I balls up a few corners, probably lost about half a second or so. But yeah, people coming at the end of lap eight, managed to get out ahead of Minty and still behind Franklish. And um, yeah, at this point I was like, right, I'm in the mix with the front runners at the moment. So I'll just stick behind them and just carry on. And I just went way too deep into that corner. And that put Minty straight on my uh, rear of my car again. So, and he set me up like a kipper. I, there was nothing I could do about that. And then he drives clean around the outside. I give him a little nudge. I wasn't attempting to. Noticed he's changed his flag again. One one week he's South African, the next he's from Zimbabwe. So wonder what it's going to be for China. Right here. Yeah. Now it's just a case of not really damage limitations, but if I can stick with these guys throughout my stint on the primes, because I've I'm trying to think when would they pit? It'd probably be about lap lap 17, lap 18, depending on how the tyres go. 
I'm, I was looking to go to about lap 19, lap 20 to make sure like the options weren't going to die on me. Because when, when your tyres hit the cliff on this game, they have no grip. None. Just completely zilch. It's like ice skating pretty much. I mean, you're ice skating pretty much half the time, even with grip on your tyres. So without them, it's just horrendous. But yeah, just want to try and stick with these guys. So on my last stint on the options, it gives me a fighting chance to... I'm not really expecting a podium. That was from the start, seeing as I was holding my own up there. As you can see, Ellis, like who was behind me before I pitted, got, went two laps longer on the options and still came out ahead. So the undercut doesn't really work that much on this game but if you've got clean air and you can put in a solid lap time then just go for it but yeah I weren't really after the start of the race I was like I could possibly get a podium out of this but at this at this stage of the race just thinking well, as long as I can hold on to them I give myself a chance of fighting for a podium I mean at this moment I was starting to think all right race will go ahead I'll come into I'll come into the pits I'll probably come out about round about this position really about sixth seventh and then have to start fighting forward. And I don't know what happened here to Minnie. It was like he had like two massive lag spikes. Like you see him drop from in front of Ellis to behind, uh, it's not Franklish, uh, Maisie. And um, you'll see as we go around the next left-hander, he gets another massive lag spike. And it's not just behind me. He ends up behind Jason as well. So I fuck knows what happened there. But Minty had a terrible lap just due to connection issues. Like look, you see him like there behind my car, right next to Jason and then even further back. The only person I've known that's had a massive lag spike like that is Leo Bot. And he gets them at the worst times possible. Now I think it was Spa last year. He'd done, he done a wicked move around the outside of... Is it Fizzy and Matty? And as soon as he got ahead of them coming out of the bus stop chicane, his lag spike straight back behind. And not even like a little bit behind. Like I think it was a few seconds behind Fizzy. So... I just oh, felt for him, man. But I, I wasn't going to take it. I mean, look how powerful the DRS is on this track. Look, Jason was miles behind and then comes shooting up. I'm I'm not going to fight it, though, because I don't want to lose time. Brosiek tries to send it down the inside with a little cheeky dive bomb. Not, that's not happening. <laughs> he should know by now that if, if you're going to attempt something like that on me, you're going to have to pull something out of the hat quite drastically. But, yeah, on to lap 13. Tyres are holding up pretty well. I'm not really losing too much time I'm kind of holding up Brosiek I guess but I'm I'm, per I'm not purposely holding him up I'm just trying to keep up with the guys ahead giving myself a fighting chance going into the end of this going, in, going into the last stint of this race as if you haven't got that like, after the fourth or fifth time of mentioning it but yeah it's pretty much a sitting duck for Brosiek at this point I mean with DRS I'm not wasting fuel because I'm going to try and save as much as, as possible for and Brosiek gets really close but, um, yeah, it doesn't really intimidate me. Got Minnie trying to go around the outside again. I think he might... Well, no, he didn't back out of that, actually. Well, I guess you could say that was an illegal overtake. Um, I didn't really leave him enough room on the inside, if I'm honest. So, I'm not going to argue. He would have got past me anyway, so... I'd rather just... Sit on the back of all these guys and lost the back end for it. That just lost me about two tenths, roughly. And it sort of put me off for this like whole next set of corners. So like I was, I had a rhythm going and then I've lost it and it's gonna take me a while to get it going again. But still, still thinking positive and then that happens. See now, my issue with this is I know it weren't Montoya's fault. I get that like this game is bullshit. But surely if that happens when you're going for a move, the right well not the right thing. The gentlemanly thing to do would be to wait for the guy who you've not. You haven't caused the sidepod glitch, it's just saying in this game, but you were part of the incident that happened. So surely the gentlemanly thing to do would be to wait. Like, I'd, I'd love to know what like, you guys think. Because if I've said it before in like an XRL league race I commentated on. I would wait, even if I didn't, even if I noticed a sidepod glitch, I would wait because it ruins the racing for both people. Well, I guess it doesn't ruin it for Montoya because he carried on going. But it ruined my race, and I was I was on for quite a decent finish considering my pace and everything going into it, and like the people we're racing against, like JD, an absolute beast, Leo Bot, quick as hell, Brosiek, just quick as hell, all the TRL boys actually, quick as hell. All right, and it my race got ruined because of a sidepod glitch. 
But yeah, you'll see now we're in 12th. We are 11 and a half seconds behind Carter Cayenne with only eight laps to go. So it's going to be a tall order and I'm only using Rich in sectors one and sectors three as I don't want to kill the tyres as I want to make sure I have enough left to get round the last lap. So yeah, next lap, we took a, pretty much a second and a half out of him there. Gone down to 10.2. Not really setting any fastest laps as I'm just concentrating on keeping it clean. Not over revving the tight like that. I know because a lot of a lot of well not a lot. Certain F1 YouTubers will say you can floor it out the corners. To a degree you can, but it, it does affect your tire wear. And take this from somebody who's tried to do like alternate strategies like a one stop round Malaysia and stuff like that. Your driving style does affect your tire wear. So don't just, just because some YouTubers say, oh yeah, you can floor it out the corners. Don't think you can just sit there and floor it out the corners. Think logically when you're driving. Like, if you're burning out the tires and you're getting wheel spin, you're just wasting grip. Like, the one thing I would say, if you want to save tires, when you're going through the low gears coming out of a slow corner, short shift. And then when you get to about gear five, that's when you start over revving it to get the speed. Because if you can make your tires last on this game, you have a serious advantage against everyone else. Because a lot of people will drive it, drive this game like they're driving F1 2013. I'll just throw it out the corner. And you'll see it because you'll see if you're behind someone close enough, the tyres will start smoking. And I know Codemasters are notoriously known for like making everything scripted. But it does make a difference. It, your driving style and everything makes a difference to the, how quick your tyres go off. So if you can keep it smooth and you can keep it clean, your tyres should... I'm not saying you're going to go like an extra five laps than everybody else. Not in a 50% race, no. You might be able to easily go another one or two laps. And when I say easily, it means you don't have to focus so much on like traction zones. Like You, ju you just keep driving steady, not over revving the engines coming out of slow corners. And not slight, just keeping it like there. Try to limit the wheel spin up into fourth gear and then start over revving it. I mean... There are some corners where you can't help but slide into the corners or you like that. I probably sh should have let out the power, but didn't. But yeah, we've managed to catch Carter Kayen a lot quicker than I was expecting. I think we caught him, must have been about, what, five, six laps? So yeah, just uh, no point in rushing. We're not fighting for any points. Like I hadn't been racing with anybody for the last six laps. So I thought, you know what, may as well have some fun. I was having fun at the beginning of the race until it got ruined, but hey-ho, shit happens. Especially when you're playing a Codemasters game. But yeah, look, smoothly coming out of the corners, trying not to open, and that's when I noticed my tyres were going. And it doesn't help Carter Kane's lagging. What is it with this game and people lagging when I'm racing them? Ah, oh, Codemasters. But um, that was the point when I noticed my tyres were going out, because as I was going around, I didn't change anything to the throttle input or the steering angle. Like, you just felt the rear end give a little bit. So I was like, all right got to calm down a bit and you can see Carl Kayton like making him overdrive I made sure I got a clean exit out of that corner and as I saw him lagging up all way to the right hand side as I don't want any lag issues to get involved with this battle for not even last place just the point the position outside of the points I guess like the last loser mm. fuck that don't even make sense <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about? But anyway, yeah, Carter Kane goes back up the inside after a little. The curb, you see what I mean about that curb? Like, you can catch it the wrong way and it just spits you out like a bitch. But yeah, still racing with Carter Kane. I thought I'd back out of that there because I tried to hang it around the inside, but didn't quite work. Probably could have gone a lot deeper into that and made him back out of turning in early, but didn't want to cause any collisions. So I'm just biding my time. It's pretty obvious I've got the pace advantage over him. It looks like he's tried to go as long as possible on that. It's looked like he's tried to undercut a few people to try and gain a few positions or get closer to 10th. I, I don't know what happened during his race. But um, it looks like his primes are literally dead on the feet. And you can see what I mean about the smoke. Look, he's flooring it out the corners. Just wheel spitting like... People don't understand that if you do that, your tyres are going to wear. I know it's a game and I know people think it's scripted, but just instead of believing what everybody else says about this game, just play the game how you want to drive and see how the game reacts. Like, if you're an aggressive driver and you want to drive like Carter Kane, he's like flooring it out of every corner and spinning up your tyres, cool. 
If you figured out a way to make that work for you, then all be it. But I know for some people it might not work. So try being a little bit smoother. Try being a little bit more Jensen Button rather than Hamilton. Just keep it smooth, no wheel spin. I come out of the throttle there so I don't get wheel spin, so I can pull away from Carter K okay, and that's it. But yeah, come around to the last lip. Uh, lip? Lap. Pretty disappointing to be honest. But after that, well, not really a takeout, but after that sidepod glitch with Montoya, I was sort of looking forward to my first points. That didn't really happen. But yeah, congratulations to Limitless winning another race. I think it was Limitless that won this. But yeah, so hopefully I've got to go to China and get a few points. But I hope you enjoyed this commentary, people. If you need help with setups, let me know or anything. But yeah, peace.